So now, um, please um, let me introduce myself. Um, I'm a research uh, fellow at uh, Geneva University, and um, my PhD dissertation focused on Bergson and his concept of time or, time or duration. Uh, but um, after my PhD, I have been working on the relations between literature and philosophy, and in particular also around the question of time. So my forthcoming book uh, deals with how philosophy informed um, poetical, poetical thinking of Maurice Pasternak. But um, today um, I'm not going to talk about Pasternak, but uh, about his um, the other poets of the same age, uh, Osip Mandelstam, uh, which is sometimes who is sometimes considered as his um, anti-poet. Um, so I started my work um, on Mandelstam as Bergson scholar, and my interest was limited to some common points that I saw in Mandelstam's early verse and Bergson's theory of duration. <coughs> Mandelstam is an, quite an anti-Bergsonian or pseudo Bergsonian uh, in his lyrics, and quite more Bergsonian in his critical um, texts and reflections. Um, but it is not my focus. Um, in this talk. As a philosopher, I was even more um, interested in another approach. I reversed the perspective and, instead of studying Mandelstam's attitude towards philosophy and the way he himself made use of it, I came to explore the question why Mandelstam, um, as a poet, was of such an interest to contemporary philosophers. Indeed, he is one of the rare Russian poets to be read and appreciated by European, especially French, philosophers. Almost in the same time as Holderlin, um, in the same way, um, sorry, as Holderlin or Paul Salan, he is frequently qualified as a poet philosopher, was philosopher poet. Um, Mandelstam's images of the freedom and of the century, the ideas of personal memory and languages babbling were pointed out and discussed by such philosophers as Jacques Rancière, um, Alain Badiou, um, George Agamben. But the dominant framework of analysis uh, was given by Alain Badiou and um, Giorgio Agamben, uh, who pointed out the singular attitude towards time and history that distinguishes Mandelstam uh, from every other modernist uh, poet um, of his age. According to them, Mandelstam is the poet who dares to look the age, well, his age, the century, straight in the face. Badiou and Agamben congratulate him for his ability to be contemporary to his age and endow him with the capacity of the poetical and poetic thinking. According to Badiou, uh, Badiou's formula, I quote here from his book The Century, the true poetic thinking of the time consists in seeing the things with one's own eyes and at the same time seeing them with the eye of the century itself. End of quote. Or, as Agamben puts it, to be contemporary to one's age is to be capable of including himself subjectively, that is, of experiencing the time from within, and practice at the same time a necessary critical distancing. This task is being intimate with the century, and at the same time being excluded exterior to it, seems much more complicated when we are talking about rev revolutionary times. It means that one is compelled to be contemporary to the drastic and radical change happening in the established course of time, causing its break with all that preceded, and to this troubled period of inter-temporality, when nothing is yet clear, when everything is yet to come. So let us first formulate the main points of Badiou, uh, Badiou's argumentation, and Agamben's also, um, in part, which follows the Badiou's um, framework. Uh, Badiou addresses the question of the contemporary in two texts. In this article, in the article called The Age of the Poets, where he renders Mandelstam above, among five other modern poets um, and characterizes them as the poets of the age of the poets, which means the poets who maintain a privileged relation to their time. So it is not a, at all an aesthetic category, but a philosophical one as it describes the situation in which the poets find themselves in the 20th century, the early 20th century. 
uh, when the poetry takes over philosophy and thinks something that philosophy is no more able to think. For Mandelstam, this poetical thought, he, re he re reinitiates systematically the thought of his age, the relation to his century. His poetry questions what are the conditions of the thought capable of embracing the catastrophe of uh, 1970, 17 in all its impl implications, um, says Badiou. But the poet doesn't look for the sense of this event so that he could assign to it a clear historical place, put it on the scale of historical progress. The poet does not offer his, any comprehension of the historical events. The poetic thinking is not of the order of cognition. On the contrary, but you proclaims a profound disorientation, initial ignorance of what is happening, the innocence of the poetical subject was lost in his time, in his century. So the subject lacks to himself, he doesn't even identify himself as a source of the poetical word. So, but you backs up his thesis quoting two poems of uh, Mandelstam, uh, one which is called, uh, which is called Whoever Finds a Horseshoe, written in 1923, and another one, the 1st of January, 1924. Um, so, here is the stanza from the second one. O life of clay, O dying of the century, I fear you may be known only by him who shows the errant smile of those who've lost themselves. In order to say the truth about the century, the poet should try to coin coincide with it. Or to coincide with it means that the poet must lose himself in it, dissolve in it, abandon the idea of plenitude, completion, and sufficiency. Instead of facing directly the violence of his time, he should avoid to confront it placing himself on another side, in the untimely, accepting the deficiency of what possible meanings attributed to the century. Here is a, another quote. This is a quote from another poem, so a poem that 1st of January 1924, which Badiou uses um, as well. The time tries to bite them through. Here are the teeth marks. Time cuts me down like a clipped coin and I'm no longer sufficient unto myself. So this is the last phrase, which is crucial for Badiou. Um, Mandelstam, according to Badiou, shows how the present bites through the past and the subject, the I, is not sufficient unto himself, but is missing to himself. So Badiou's very interesting idea is to say that where devastating historical time demands a wholly existent, wholly present hero, Instead, there is someone to whom the plenitude of existence lacks essentially. But this lack of the self means also the, that not only the present, the actual time is disturbed by the past itself that constitutes the subject. The subject who doesn't have any past cannot resist to the present, has no consistency, and that almost facilitates his disappearance in, this, in his century. So the place of the poet in his century is thus anonymous, um, unidentifiable. <laughs> um, that is at least how, according to Badiou, Mandelstam adopts the strategy of eluding, of avoiding his time. As Badiou claims, um, the great lyrical tradition that we inherit from the Romantics, um, and which informs our poetry, lyrical poetry, um, envisions its task as that of a hierar hierarchical organization of all the meanings, a cosmic order that will end the chaos. Contemporary poets, the poets of the age of poets, do not classify the meanings, but work with the language as a form of enunciation once the meaning has been interrupted, suspended. This suspended meaning can characterize the main tendency in contemporary poetry. It is no more signifying or representational poetry because there is no object to be represented. Even the mimetic distance, if we suppose that mimesis always requires distance, is no longer possible. There is no, long, no possible objectivity of the world that can be attested by poets. Instead, the only thing that matters poetically is the utterance or its method of utterance, as Badiou argues. And it is itself a break in the chain of meanings. 
whether it is related to the experience of profundity of one's inner life or of immersing in the profundity of nature, because those thematic um, coherence is still kept in the uh, contemporary poetry. So the poetry doesn't pretend to give a totalizing vision of the world either. And Mendelssohn's poetry offers us the experience of the disorientated subject. Um, in another text, which offers an interpretation of Mandelstam's poem, The Century, uh, or The Age, there's another possible translation, uh, but you introduce some precisions to his understanding of Mandelstam that, seems, that seem um, to contradict his conception of the age uh, of the age of the poets. He examines basically three stanzas from this poem. So I just... Um, Wanted to uh, sorry. Okay. Um, so it's here. Uh, so if you put them side by side, of course it's a poem. poem uh, it's a whole poem, but I'm extracted all, only those three um, excerpts um, so that we can better compare them. Uh, so we see, we can see clear movement, a response that Mandelstam gives, in spite of the helplessness uh, of his experience of the age pointed out by Badiou earlier. Um, so I'll read it. My age, my beast, who will manage? Well, this is quite a simple translation. It's not quite a translation. It's just um, a way to um, convey the ideas which are mentioned in the poems. So it's word to word translation. My age, my beast, who will manage to look inside your eyes and with his own blood weld vertebrae, vertebrae of two centuries? To free the age from its confinement, to instigate a brand new world that is cordoned, tangled days must be linked as with a flute. So this is the second one was cited, was quoted um, this morning already. Um, and the third one, still the shoots will swell and the green buds sprout, but your spinal cord is crushed, my fantastic wretched age. And in lunatic beatitude, you look back cruel and weak, like a beast that once was agile at the tracks left by your feet. So in the first excerpt, Mandelstam poses a question that seems to demand an answer. Sorry, that seems to demand no answer. Um, and is presented as a bitter statement. Who can peer, who can look into your eyes, my century? Exclaims Pastor. Uh, sorry, Mandelstam. In the second excerpt, uh, he offers nevertheless a solution. The fluid art is there to restore the succession between the days to rebuild the continuous flow of time. And in the third stanza, he prefigures what will happen next, despite the pitiful situation of the age. The century, the beast, looks back at its tracks. It seeks to grasp its own history. So the history is here considered the quality of its life. The life of um, this history is to be mastered, not merely surrendered to. And here, Badiou stresses the presence of Bergson and Nietzsche's vitalism in this figure of the century beast. By a voluntary gesture, one must force the history. The world is broken back. But in spite the inevitable violence of this gesture, there is still a profound undecidability about it. In fact, the poem utters three different things at the same time. Helplessness, feeling of compassion towards the dying century, impossibility to interfere in its sad destiny, then vitalist necessity for the century beast itself to rise from the dead to start a new historical order. And the third one, confrontation with the beast not yet dead, to repair him poetically and to reestablish the order of centuries. And Badiou argues that the contradiction between those three possibilities is abolished um, or sublated um, well, by the form of the poem as such. So the poem can say anything, everything simultaneously. That is its privilege as a poet, as a poem, state by you. 
Um, I would rather argue that there is no contradiction between uh, those three ideas, even on the rational or philosophical level. In fact, we have three temporal levels in this poem. A human nostalgic experience of the waning, waning time, a new conception of history, independent of man, and finally, poetic organization of the time. The poet's task is to fuse the vertebrae of the century. The poetic organization of time is an operation which is to be carried out by the poet himself, and Mandelstam will remain faithful to it, as we can see not only in his poetry, but also in his critical writings. It means to bridge the gap between the merciless course of history and the individual experience of time, so feeling lost in it and being nostalgic of the past times in which we believe we were rooted. So the motive from the age of the poets so Nadeau's text, is still present in this interpretation, though under a slightly different form, that of nostalgia. But the refusal to reconstruct the century, as Badiou claims for all the poets of the age of the poets, is not entirely relevant in the case of Mandelstam. So Mandelstam's hero feels at the same time that he's objectively pushed out century, of the century, of the histories, um, and still belongs subjectively to his time, even if it, if it is over. He's perfectly aware of those two mutually exclusive levels, subjective experiential and objective historical. So this twofold experience on the age bet edge between history and individual time underlies a new conception of time yet to come. Um, Mandelstam deserves um, all the credit for having poetically expressed the need for a new conception of time, compatible with the revolutionary transformation of the century. But he doesn't venture to go further, at least not in this poem, and suggest the outlines, um, only and suggest the outlines of this conception. But he surely undertakes it in different other writings, and especially prosaic and critical ones. So it would be interesting to look into other texts to see how Mandelstam tackles this problem. Um, and he's no doubt one of the rare poets to know not only how to poetically express historical events, but how to transpose historically his own emotions or his poetic sensibility. So thank you very much for your attention.